Now, uh, Professor, welcome, and uh, Professor Chinebubo, welcome to, uh, to to the session. So, um, I'll have a few remarks to make before we begin the session. As you are all aware, in the uh, we are very lucky that uh, this is the first time in two years that we had uh, had a Professor Chinebubo lecture. I uh, actually the last one was less than a year ago. It makes history. And also that it's uh, the third in a span of 10 years. We hope we can make, more, make them more frequent in the future. I believe, I believe that you have seen the topic on the internet and maybe you know very little or you know very, very much about the topic, um, which is uh, reduction of poverty and uh, food insecurity in the country by uh, using tilapia, which is a common species. <coughs> and I'm sure that all of you who are here this afternoon, by the time you leave this, this hall, you'll be more knowledgeable about what uh, Professor Tinyobu has been talking about. Um, I've been given only five minutes uh, to give my remarks. Um, and what I can say, you've all come this afternoon to listen to Professor Chinyambuga, our speaker, who is going to address these issues of inequality, uh, of poverty and uh, food insecurity. Um, more about him will be, you'll be told by the Deputy First Chancellor Academic, and therefore, without wasting more of your time, let me welcome Professor Gila to introduce our speaker. Thank you. Uh, the presenter, Professor Sebastian Chenyambuga, uh, the audience, ladies and gentlemen. As you all know, delivering Professor in Oglo lecture is a requirement for every member of academic staff at the rank of professor. Here I think we have to be very specific, at the rank of professor, not at the rank of associate professor. I think these two are different. Although the practice is for all professors to deliver this lecture, if you go to the history of it, it is basically meant for newly appointed professors. It's indeed a rare opportunity to showcase uh, and summarize one's research career and acknowledge the work of others, close, of other close colleagues and mentors. It is a way of getting people to know what academic or research activities a professor has carried out over years and what his or her future research interests are. So it's a very rare opportunity for somebody's academic career. In the past, delivering professor in local lecture was not very smooth at our institution here at SUA. And the reason had always been, among other things, shortage of funds to facilitate preparations. However, since last year, I'm happy to inform you that more professors are coming out to deliver professorial inaugural lecture, and the, the university is facilitating the preparations. Last year, professor inaugural lecture was delivered at SUA by Professor Maulidi Mwatawala on the 20th March 2018. So it's about, it's almost a year now. It's almost a year now. From 20th March 2018, yeah, exactly. Yes. After that date, we, we received names of three other professors who came forward with intention to present Professor inaugural lecture. Professor Chinyambuga was to present this inaugural lecture late last year, but due to unavoidable, un 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 unavoidable reasons, it was pushed to today. The other two professors are working with the preparation. One of them is seated here. I want to mention his name because I'll be giving pressure to him. <laughs> but he's seated in this room here. He'll be coming soon. And this is good news. So ladies and gentlemen, these professorial inaugural lectures are now back. And this is an indication, once again, of academic life. Professor Chinyambuga, we thank you for coming forward to deliver this lecture. I urge all of you professors to continue coming forward and deliver such lectures in order to sustain this practice which is healthier 
for academic and research life. It might be of interest to some of you who don't know to learn that Professor Chenyambuga was promoted to professor in 2015. It has taken him almost three years to come forward with the intention to deliver professorial inaugural lecture. I commend you, Professor Chinyambuga, for your courage, and I wish you a good presentation. All these guys are excited to listen from you. <clears throat> Mr. S Professor Sebastian, Sebastian Wilson Chenyambuga was born on 15th April 1965 in Magu district in Mwanza region. He received his ordinary level secondary school education at Mpwapa Secondary School in Dodoma region from 1981 to 1984 and advanced secondary school education at Kiba High School in Pwani region from 1985 to 1987. He studied BSc Agriculture Animal Science Option at Suwa from 1989 to 1991. And again, he joined the MSc Agriculture in Animal Production at Suwa from 1992 to 1994. And the later PhD at Suwa from 1997 to 2002. As you can see, Professor Chinambuga is a homegrown speech of Usua. So we commend you very much. Professor Chinyambuga started his professional career at Usua in 1995 as a research assistant uh, working with Enreka project in the then Department of Animal Science and Production. He was employed as an assistant lecturer in the year 2000 at the, department, at the then Department of Animal Science and Production. He then rose to the ranks of lecturer in 2003, senior lecturer in 2006, and the associate professor in 2010, and the professor in 2015, not full professor, and the professor in 2015. Professor Chinyambuga was appointed a deputy dean administration for the then faculty of agriculture, and he served from 2014 to 2017. Currently, he's the acting head of the Department of Animal, Aquaculture, and the Range Sciences. He was appointed as a member of the Tanzania Meat Board in 2015, a trainium which extended to 2018. Recently, he has been appointed to the board, to the board as the board chairman of the Tanzania Livestock Research Institute Board, Taliri, and this trainium will extend from 2019 to 2021. He also serves as a treasurer for the Tanzania Society of Animal Production, TSAP, for a trainium which started from 2018 to 2020. Professor Chenyambuga teaches the following courses in the College of Agriculture mostly, Introductory Animal Genetics with the anti as 102 Research Methodology, with the anti AS210, uh, fish genetics and stock improvement with the anti AQ200, animal biotechnology with the anti AS313, molecular genetics and the biotechnology with the anti AS607. This is a course which is offered to postgraduate students, and a course called the conservation genetics for aquatic resources. H.A.R. He has so far supervised a total of 23 master's students and he also he has supervised a four PhD students. Professor Chinyambuga has been involved in 20 research projects and served as a project leader for 10 projects. His research work has been mainly in cattle, goats and Nile tilapia. I think these are fish. The research projects on Nile tilapia include the development of a sustainable tilapia culture in Tanzania. That's one of them. Another one is improving the productivity of Nile tilapia through selective breeding and the mass production of fingerlings. Another project on aquaculture production and human health. Another project 
pro project on the nutrition and the food supply in Tanzania and Ghana on, on aquaculture. Another one is on pond unit assessment in Tanzania. Another one is strengthening research and teaching capacity for sustainable development of aquaculture in Tanzania. And lastly, a project on the breeding st stronger university phase three on the aquaculture project. So Professor Chinabuga has published a total of 43 papers in peer-reviewed journals, and he has 37 papers as conference proceedings. So this, I think, is a very commendable job for this, for this gentleman, Professor Chinyambuga. Professor Chinyambuga's current research focus is on evaluation and the improvement of tilapia species. So ladies and gentlemen, in a nutshell, this is the, the biography of Professor uh, Sebastian Chenyambuga. So after this uh, introduction, I now humbly welcome Professor uh, Sebastian Wilson Chenyambuga to come forward and deliver his lecture. Please, Professor Chenyambuga. The floor is yours. I mean, sir, Deputy Vice Chancellor for Academics and the chairperson for this inaugural professorial lecturer, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Yeah, first, I would like to thank the Deputy Vice Chancellor for Academic for allowing me to make this presentation. As he said in, when he was introduced to me, I was promoted to be a full professor in 2015. And uh, he told me this, this presentation, it means I was supposed to, be, to make it in 2015. But now this is 2019. So thank you very much. Professor, I also like to thank the, the university management in general for allowing me to present this one, and uh, the vice chancellor for for facilitating uh, the preparation of this lecture. So thank you very much. Uh, as he read, in, in, as, as he introduced me, definitely I trained in animal science, and then I went into population genetics. But from 20, 2009, when I, I started working in, also in aquaculture, specifically for the Nile tilapia. And what I will present, I'll give the background, the overall worldwide of, about aquaculture. And then I narrow out the status in Tanzania. And then I'll present what we've been doing for almost 10 years in, in aquaculture, specifically for the Nile tilapia. So you are welcome to the presentation. And also, before I start, I must apologize. I think I didn't follow rightly the protocol. Uh, I was supposed to put on the gowns, I think you know. But I <laughs> so, so please bear with me for, for that, not following the protocol exactly. So the title of my presentation is Development of Sustainable Nile Tilapia Culture for Improved Security and Poverty Reduction. As, as I show here, you can produce fish in ponds or in tanks, and you can get food or you can get money. Yeah, the problem worldwide is hunger and also malnutrition. That is a big problem. If I can show you, this shows the, the, how the problem, the extent of the problem, especially in Africa where you can see the range of undernutrition and also wasting among children is very high in, in Africa. So in Africa, we, we, we have a, a problem. Of course, in, in, with the other also continent, but in Africa is the biggest problem. So the challenge before the governments, development partners, uh, even the universities, is how 
to make countries food secure, food and the nutrition is secure. That is the challenge be, be behind all of us. We have to make sure that uh, we, we produce food, but enough food, but also nutritious food. So fish has the potential, fish has the potential to produce enough food and a nutritious food for, for the population. The world population is estimated at 7.6 billion and it is estimated that in 2050 it will reach 9 billion. So how to feed these people with nutritious food is a big challenge and everyone now is thinking how can we produce enough food? But aquaculture, you can produce food easily because you can catch the fish and then you get enough, whether you can get food or you can get money. I used to think also when, because I saw that the aquaculture is very minor thing. I used to think like that. But I, I got a, it's a DVC Academy, I got the opportunity to go to US and see aquaculture is a very big industry. It's a very, very big industry. And also, I heard the, 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 the American people are complaining of importation of fish from China. The catfish, cambari, and the, the tilapia, they complain, there is so much importation. Then I, I thought, why? We, we have a very potential land and we don't produce. Really. Even in, in Africa, the biggest producer of, of tilapia is Egypt. So we are not even among the 10 producers we in Tanzania. So it means we have, we have to make effort so that to increase production. So f why fish? Fish is important for nutrition. It has very high protein content. As you see here, it is estimated that just 150 gram of fish can provide you with about 50 to 60 percent of your requirement for protein. But also fish, it, fish has also micronutrients, for example, the omega-3 fatty acids. These are important uh, fatty acids. For, they, they say they can even uh, reduce coronary diseases and, uh, and the like. So fish is very important. And also, if you have children in nutrition, then you can use fish. Yeah, I, why night lapia? Night lapia at the moment is the second in terms of quantity, so this is ranked second worldwide, the Nile tilapia, after there is carp, and then there is Nile tilapia. And the Nile tilapia, it is native to Africa, but the biggest producer, they come from Southeast Asia. So you have China, you have Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, all those kind of Philippines, those are the biggest producers of, of tilapia. But they got that fish from Africa. And that they, are, they have improved theirs. Ours we still get from the, the lake, right? Yeah. So white lapia, it's lapia, it is easy to catch. It can reproduce in captivity. It can reproduce. Some fish are difficult to reproduce. But also it, pro, it tolerates a wide range of environmental conditions. So you can easily, you can easily catch it. It's highly tolerant to diseases. And also, I think we, we always eat tilapia. So in that case, the meat, is tasty, it's, it's product quality is very good. So that's why tilapia is popular worldwide. Yeah, as I say, world is, is the second most cultured fish and the demand for tilapia is increasing because the economic status or income of the people is increasing. As the income increases, as we are saying, we are moving from to middle, to middle income countries. It means people demand more tilapia. Because as, high, as income increases, consumption of animal protein also increases. So the demand is higher, so we have to, to increase. Yeah, this one shows also. Yes. Yeah, this shows how, how the contribution of aquaculture. If you can see, yeah, if you can see, aquaculture its contribution to total fish production has been increasing, and it is still increasing. Production from the wide, from the lakes and the uh, oceans is going, it, you see it's not increasing. It was increasing in the 50s to 60s, but you can see now it, is, it has become stagnant. 
So production from wide water bodies like lakes and, uh, and the ocean is, is declining. It means we have to depend now, for fish we have to depend from aquaculture. Yeah, aquaculture is the first growing industry. As here I said, it grows about 9.2%. It is an over about, uh, you see capture fisheries, that is from the wild. It's only, it grows only at 1.4. Meat production from farmed animals like cattle, pigs, uh, is only 2.5, the growth rate. But so aquaculture is growing at a fast rate. So in that case, aquaculture now is viewed as a potential sector or industry for poverty uh, reduction. What about the southern Tanzania? Uh, history shows that aquaculture in, in Tanzania, they say in 1927, we spawned the culture. We experiment at Maria and then at Korogwe. But culture for, for food started in 1950. Yeah. But at independence, they say the number of ponds was about just 8,000. As I will show, the number hasn't increased much because now we have about 22 points. So from 50, for 50 years, I think the increase only is very, very small. But, we are, but now the government, the Minister of Livestock and Fisheries, is promoting aquaculture as a, an alternative to capture fisheries because production from capture fisheries is declining, that is from lake and from the, 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 the ocean, the rivers. So aquaculture is important for solving the problem of poverty and uh, malnutrition, as I said. In Tanzania, the contribution of aquaculture is not much. It is now contributing only 1% of the total fish production. Because it's, it is done by subsistence farmers. I have visited Uganda and Kenya. You see, there it is done commercially. In, here is left, you see. You see, if some farmers you will have one or two points. But in recent years, there have been interest in aquaculture. Uh, people have, uh, have gone in aquaculture, so it, it, it is improved. But most of the production now comes from the inland capture fisheries, that is from the lakes and the rivers. So, yeah, you can see the production from aquaculture is increasing. The, the, the production from our fish production from aquaculture is increasing. Number of ponds, as I say, I said at Independence, there was, they said it, it, there were about 8,000 ponds. Then they went down. But from 2,000, you see, now the government started yeah, promoting aquaculture. So the number of ponds has increased now. It's, over, it's about 20,000 ponds in the country. By considering the country, because it's, it's large, then it means if you go per district, you can very, very, very few points. The fish production, there are this number of, of farmers uh, have also been increasing. Uh, we carried out a study to assess the contribution of agriculture to the household income. And we found that uh, we, we did in Mvomero, Kirosa, Mpuapua, Mfuindi, Mbarali, but in some areas, if you go by district like in Vomel, those who, who, the fish farmers, it can go even up to 20%. But on average, we said it's, it's 80%. The species that are captured, uh, I show here from fresh water, we have also mariculture seaweeds and uh, prawns or shrimps in the coast. But the night tilapia contributes 75% of the total production from aquaculture. So the night tilapia is a very important species, and it has spread in all agro agroecological zones in the country. But as I said earlier, not only in Tanzania, but even worldwide it has spread. As I said, it's the second most farmed fish in the world. So in Tanzania also, it accounts for 75%. Yeah, as I said, the production from aquaculture is very low at the moment because it's done by subsistence farmers. But uh, the general problem associated with pond culture of tilapia is that tilapia, they reproduce at very young, at very early stage. For example, at three months, they may start reproducing. It means if you put 100, then after three months, you, you can have so many. In that case, they cause a problem of 
uh, overpopulation in the pond and then competing for space and the food. In that case, the growth rate will be low. So at the end, you get low yield because of the over reproduction. If you catch a male and a female. Another problem is that our uh, farmers uh, use low quality feeds. Normally, the, the majority, they just maize the brand. The majority of the farmer, we have done a survey in several, but they maize the brand. That is all. But some, they just use weeds and uh, kitchen leftover or vegetables, something like that. So in that case, that contributes to low growth and uh, hence low production. So because of the problem of low productivity, we designed a project in, uh, in 29, 2009 to, to improve, to, to solve the problem. One problem is to, co to control the over reproduction in ponds. Another problem is of poor quality feeds. Farmers use low quality feeds because uh, the, 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 the good quality ones are expensive. Normally, feeds for, the, for example, the protein source for night tilapia, normally is based on, on the fish meal. But that is expensive. So it means we, that's why farmers don't use, they just resort to maize brand, which is of poor quality. So we, have, we, we designed a project to, to address the problem of raw productivity of, of pond catch at night tilapia, and to address two problems. One is, as I feeds, another one is the over reproduction in ponds. So the overall goal of our project was to develop low cost management protocols for small scale farmers, so that to, in order to improve the production of night tilapia. We concentrated on the night tilapia because the night tilapia is popular. We carried out a survey in many regions, Dar es Salaam, Pwani, Mwanza, Mbea, Iringa, and hardly you can see in a restaurant, you can hardly find the catfish in a restaurant, but you can find tilapia almost in, in, a, in every restaurant. So that's why we decided to, to, to concentrate on the Nairi tilapia, because it's popular. So we did a number of studies. So I will report here uh, six of them, but which contribute to solving the problem of low production of night tilapia, and also solving the problem of low quality feeds. Yeah, the first one we wanted to see the night tilapia is captured is the popular one, but in Tanzania there are many tilapia species. There are many tilapia species like I have shown here. So we want to see whether there is another species that can complement to the Nile tilapia. So we obtained the fish from Ruvuma River, so the United tilapia, they are called the Oriochromis Ruvuma, and also we got from River Wam here at Dakawa, they are called the or your lips. So we got those three, two species, and we were evaluated in comparison to the Nile tilapia to see whether maybe there is another species. So what we did, we brought fingering from the respective areas. For example, in Ruvuma, we, we got fingering from there. We got it from the rivers. From Wamidakawa, we got also the tilapia. We brought here to Sua. We reared them until they reproduced. When they reproduced, we got the fingerings. Those are the ones which we used for our experiment. And it was just to compare the gross performance and also the, in terms of approximate chemical composition of the carcass or, of the, or the meat of the, of the tilapia. So we did the experiment here at Sua, but also we did on farm uh, at Mkuyuni in Morogoro Rural District to see whether they, how do they perform on farm and also on station. If I can show you, we found that the night tilapia is superior. It was superior to both. 
uh, you can see the, the growth rate was about 0 0.68 gram per day, but the other one you can see was 0 0.39 per, per day. So the night lap was superior. So in that case, it's better to consider on the Nile trap here. The other one from Uvuma didn't perform well. Of course, there are many, there are many tilapia species which, which was only two uh, because of uh, uh, financial reason. But otherwise, we, as, uh, we are continuing evaluating others. We will continue to evaluate other species so that maybe we can have other species. For example, we have found that the night tilapia performs poorly in the undercover environment. For example, in Findi area, we found that it doesn't grow well compared to when you grow in a warm area like it. We grow fish in, in, in Mfindi and also Kilosa and Barari. And we found that in a warm environment it performs well, but under cold environment it, it, its performance is low. So in that case, it's important to find other species. But ours here, what I'm reporting here, we consider only the Ruvuma and also the Wami tilapia. And we found that the, the night tilapia is superior in terms of growth. And, and also in terms of chemical composition, for example, the, the crude protein content of the night pair was higher compared to the other one. Fat content was less compared to the other one. In that case, the, tilapia, the night tilapia is, is sweeter because it has high, high protein content and also low fat content. Yeah, another study we did is, as I said, the problem of tilapia is to reproduce at early stage. At three months, they will start reproducing. In that case, the pond will be overcrowded. So at harvest, when you come to harvest at six or eight months, then a large proportion of the fish will be the, the smaller one, the fingerings. So to avoid, we, we want to avoid that one. We looked on the method that can be used. Uh -huh. The method that can be used include, for example, some you can uh, catch at very high density, but in that case, they won't grow fast because they'll be competing for space and the food. But another one is to pour catch of, uh, you, uh, you can catch a mixture of uh, tilapia and uh, a predator fish, a fish that can eat the young tilapia. For example, the African catfish, the kambare. Another one, you can catch a fish of one sex, monosex catch. And also you can do, you can have a selectively. Every month you have rest, you remove the fingering, the, 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 yeah, the new one, you remove them. So under our condition, yeah, under our, point, our condition, we thought, we found, we thought what is possible is to use the predatory fish, the fish that can eat the, uh, the new, the new recruits or the fingerings. We, and we use the African catfish. Another one, we, do, we did manual sexing. You can sex fish, and you, in that case, you rare only males or females, depending on what you wish. So we carried out a study to compare the, the we carried out a gross, uh, a gross trial to compare the performance of the tilapia that are captured under monosex, one sex. And in this case, we captured all males. And also we captured the tilapia together with African catfish. The duty of the African catfish is to eat the newly born or hatched fry or fingerings. So we did, a, we did it was an on-farm experiment and we did it at Mkuyuni, uh, Mkuyuni Division in Mogo Ruro. So we, uh, we had two villages and uh, in each village we have three ponds. One point, one point for each of the three. So we, we had we had three treatment. One was mixed sex, the normal one how farmers do catch, where they catch a male and a female in one pond. The other one was tilapia, mixed sex, male and a female, but then you add the African catfish. The other one we catch the all males. I said the all male we have with the we generate by just sorting. It is a tedious. Uh, our result showed that uh, the performance was better for all male culture. So uh, you catch all males, then 
uh, you get more growth, higher growth, and then high yield at the end. The next was polyculture of uh, tilapia and the African catfish. Then we, another one, we, we, what we did, okay, we, we said that you can catch all males, that, that's the best, then how to produce all males. Uh, through manual uh, sexing, sorting male and female manually is a tedious job. And uh, sometimes you can, it, it needs also an experienced person, you may mistakenly also include the female, and if you include the female, they will reproduce in the ponds. So if they are producing their ponds, as I said, there will be overcrowding and then you get low yield at the end. So we looked on the method of controlling of, of, of yeah. so catching of all men is preferred because men grow faster than the female. So at the end, if you catch all men, you will have higher yield. So we use two methods. Yeah, the method for producing all males. There are many, one is, as I said, manual sex, I said manual sex is tedious, uh, it's a tedious job. You can do only if you have a small uh, amount or quantity of fish. And also, another one is hormonal sex reversal. You, you, in fish, uh, uh, not in mammals, in fish you can reverse the sex of the, of the fish, but you do so only at the very early stage of life. You can't do it after maybe so you do it immediately after being hatched that, that fry you can change the sex depending on the concentration of the hormone. If you have more female hormone, the fish will become female. If you have more male hormone, then the fish will become male. Yeah. So in this case our interest was to make to reverse the sex to make them all male. Yeah. Another one is hybridization, the last piece of tilapia you can hybridize. For example, the Nari tilapia, the Mozambique tilapia, if you hybridize, then you get a lot of male, you get males. So there is also hybridization. There is also another super males or YY males. Yeah, in some countries they have created the YY males or super males. You can, that if they are YY, it means all the, the offspring will be male. Because in order to be female, for example, you need to be X and X two X. But if you have you met Y Y, the female is X X. It means the offspring will be X Y. That is a male. So among this one, we thought which one is applicable for us. We we went for two hormonal treatment and the hybridization, but that also are easier. Yeah. So we we, we it means. What we did, we got fingering, we collected from the Victoria, the Nari tilapia, and the Wami tilapia from River Wami, we brought them here. So the Nari tilapia, we reared them, they produced the fingering. The fingering is the one which we reverse their sex by treating with them with the hormone, 17 methyl testosterone, or simply. 17 alpha MT, that is the male hormone. So we, and, uh, if you treat the fish, then you have to fry it will, or it will change to males. So we, we, so we, 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 we compared now, we have two. One, all males, which are uh, sex reversed males. And then the hybrid, if you hybridize the one tilapia and the nine tilapia, you get Males. So we also so we have which one is better is the hybrid or the sex reversed? That was the what we wanted to to, to address. Uh, this just shows how you can do it. Normally use uh, the hormone, the empty hormone, uh, 60 milligram per kilogram of feed, fish feed, and the the, the hormone you dissolve it in in ethanol. And then it's in one liter of ether, and that one liter you mix with the feed, and then you feed the fish. So in that case, you produce all males. For the hybrid, we did a reciprocal cross that we use a male from night lamp here, 
a female from one tilapia and then you reverse. That's what we did. And then we observed what, which one can produce more males and then one, which one grows faster. Uh, these are the, just the methodology, but I just want to go to, you can see here, uh, hybridization, it means it gave more, more males. We got 94% males. For the hormone, hormone treatment, we, we got 90%. But uh, statistically, they, they, they were, it was not dif different, but proportionately, hybridization, we, we got more males. So we advocate for hybridization. But if you need to do hybridization, it means you need to keep two species, the one tilapia and the nine tilapia. And then when you mate, you get the male, you get male, and then when you grow, they want to reproduce, it means you get high yield. We also looked on the, on the growth, we found that the hybrid, uh, they grow faster than you compare with the sex reversed. But the sex reversed, they also, the, their growth rate was higher, compared to the mixed sex. So if you capture, most farmers do complain of low, of low yield, but simply because of this problem of over reproduction. So you can solve it by growing all males and you can produce it by hybridization, but also by sex reversal. You use the male hormone. You can also produce all female if you use the female hormone. Uh, we looked here on the condition factor in fish. They have what they call condition factor that indicates the well-being of the fish, how well, how, how fit that fish is. You can see the hybrid. The hybrid, the, the condition factor for the hybrid was higher compared to the other one. So it means the hybrid is better compared to the other. The survival rate, it wasn't bad, but of course the sex reversed fish, their survival rate was higher compared to the others, but the difference wasn't significant. So still we say the hybrid is better. So you can produce hybrid by, by just mating two species. I said the one tilapia and the nine tilapia. Then another one with, the, as I said, the problem is that fee, uh, farmers use low quality feeds. They can't use the commercial feeds because they are expensive. So we develop now uh, cheap diet, but uh, of higher quality. So in this case, we looked on the source of protein, mainly in fish is, is fish meal, sardagad, uh, I want to say fish. So, but fish meal is, is expensive. So people have come to a replacement of, of fish meal with soya bean, soya bean, soya bean meal. Yeah, soya bean meal is used as a replacement of fish meal because its protein content is high and also its amount profile is high. It is good. And also its, its price is relatively low compared with the fish meal. But still, farmers cannot use the soya bean. So we thought of, of, you, of, of getting a, a cheaper one that is all available almost free. And we looked at the source of protein. We have the oily seed cake, for example, cotton seed cake or sunflower seed cake. But we thought those also are expensive. But we also also my papa's tree, the Jumna's tree. Uh, we looked in the literature and found that the Moringa, Moringa Leifera, is, uh, it has a very high green protein content and its amino profile is more similar to, to soya bean. Uh, we did one experiment first, we, we, we compared with the Lucina the Cospara, the Lucina. We found that the Moringa is better than it, Lucina. So Lucina, we thought we can use this one now instead of the soya bean. So we did a, an experiment now to replace soybean with moringa, but also we had sunflower seed cake because sunflower seed cake is easily available. Yeah, we did a space. Uh, so what we wanted to know here, what level, what inclusion level can you use moringa and uh, sunflower seed cake in fish diet? That was the main. Uh, our main question we wanted to address. 
So we did, the, we, we formulated nine diets uh, where soybean, soybean was placed with moringa or sunflower seed cake or a combination. For example, that the one here, the source of protein there is, is the soybean. That the two the, is sunflower and that the three is moringa and then that the four to nine is a different combination. So we have different combination of moringa and the sunflower and also moringa and the, and the soya bean. And then we did an experiment here at SUA to see which one can promote fast growth. I can just show the result. We found that if you use as a source of protein, you can completely replace soya bean with moringa and sunflower seed cake. But if you use sunflower seed cake uh, alone, that the two, you can see the performance is very low. That the two, that the one is the, the source of protein there is 100% soya bean. But we found that the five, which contains 50% moringa, 50% sunflower seed cake, that the performance was high, because that is the weight gain, it was higher compared to the other one. Even when that the six, that is 75% moringa, 25% sunflower, still the performance is higher, more or less even above than the soya bean. So we, we, as we say that you can use moringa and the sunflower seed cake. And this is possible at farmer's level because it's the moringa you can grow them, uh, the, the sunflower seed cake are easily available. So you can replace. Uh, uh, here we are showing even if you look on the feed conversion ratio, uh, for that five is better. For feed conversion FCR, the lower the value, the better. So even in terms of food protein content, it is much different. Then. We looked also another one is to reduce cost in in fish, especially if you catch under intensive fish farming, 60 to 75 to 70 percent of the cost will be from feeds. It means if you use a large quantity of feeds, means you get a, a loss. Under under small scale extensive system, feed cost can contribute up to, up to 50 percent. So. We looked on how we can you reduce the cost. One, as I said, is use a cheaper diet. But another one, what we say, is it necessary to feed every day? So you can skip a day, in that case at the end, use a small amount of feed, in that case you reduce the cost. So we did an experiment where we compared First feed, feeding level, the quantity. We had three levels, 1% of the body weight, 2.5% 2 2 of the body weight, and then 5% of the body weight. In fish, normally, when you, the, when the, the young one, during the first month, you feed at 20%, and then you can decrease up to 5%. Now, we wanted to see whether you can go below 5%. But then again, we said, can you skip a day you feed on alternative days. In that case, you reduce the quantity of feed and you lower the cost. So we did an experiment, and uh, uh, these are just you. We used the best data from the previous experiment of Moringa and the sunflower seed cake. So we used that, that diet. So we, we had, we had, we had a, a better data from the previous experiment, and then we used it in this experiment. So how does that show that uh, the, you feed at five percent of body weight, then you get higher. You can see yeah, you can see this. This is five percent uh, that the growth was better at five percent. This is five percent, but you skip on the alternate days. So we found that in terms of growth and the size that you have is you get high yield at 
for feeding 5% of the body weight daily. But if you skip a day, still you get higher value. But in terms of economics, we, we can find that feeding at 5% and skipping a day, you, you, you get uh, uh, more profit than if you feed daily. Of course, it also will be smaller. So this, if you feed you just 1% and you skip a day, that is, is poor. So we, yeah, we encourage people to feed, if it's possible, feed every day. If not possible, you can skip a day, but feed at 5%. For example, if you reduce to 2.5%, so feeding 5% 5, 5 but you skip a day, and feeding 2.5% every day, it's better you feed 5%, you skip a day, than feeding 2.5% every day. Yeah, these are just showing the feed conversion ratio and the survival. Yeah, the last one which I want to report here is still the issue of reducing cost. The Nile tilapia, they can also eat in ponds. They can eat uh, like a microalgae, micro the microplants in, in the fish. The, you see the water in the pond is green because of the small, small microscopic plants called phytoplankton. And the fish can eat those ones. But also there are microscopic animals called zooplankton. The zooplankton can eat the phytoplankton. The, the zooplankton they become eaten by the fish. So if you promote more production of phytoplankton, the microscopic plants, so that you have more zooplankton, then the fish get uh, food. They can eat both phytoplankton and zooplankton, but also other insects. So in the fish, as I said, most of the production comes from, from, from feeds. So it's important to find strategies for reducing the cost. And the one way of reducing cost is to fertilize the pond. When you fertilize the pond, you encourage the production of the microscopic plants or phytoplanktons, which are eaten by zooplankton, which in turn are eaten by the fish. So we did an experiment, we did two experiments, one at Suwa, but another in Klosa. But I'll just report here at Suwa, at Suwa, we did in concrete tanks. We have our, our facilities there at Magadu. Yeah, as I said, fertilization will promote production of phytoplankton, which are eaten by zooplankton. Zooplankton are eaten by fish. So in that case, you can reduce the cost if you fertilize the pond. So now, now the issue is how much do you provide? So we did an experiment where we had three treatments. One is uh, pond fertilization alone, you fertilize the pond weekly so that you promote more production of the phytoplankton. Uh, another one, you feed concentrated feeds at 5% of body weight. As we found that 5% of body weight daily feeding is better. So you feed 5% of the body weight daily alone without the fertilizer. The third one was on you fertilize and also you feed, but now we reduce the feed to half. So for, uh, for the last treatment, we, we used them. Uh, so this is our treatment here. We, weekly fertilization of, of, we used concrete tanks, so we fertilize weekly with the fertilizer. We use the commercial or inorganic fertilizer, urea and the dump. Urea yeah, source of N and the dab source of P. And the absorbed rate. And then we fed at 5% of body weight daily. The last treatment we are weekly fertilization, but we reduce the amount of feed to half. The problem is because if you feed and then you add fertilizer, there is a problem you have lost to monitor the water quality. So you may also cause pollution. If you add a lot of feeds, 
the next word is required, it means the water will be polluted, it means the fish will want to grow, they may even die. So we wanted to see. We use sex reverse the night lab here, as I said, you can easily reverse the sex by treating with hormone. Yeah, and uh, we, as I said, we fed in the first the first month, normally you feed 10%, then you reduce to 5%. If you start with 5, then you reduce to 2.5. We fed a diet, a diet and fish, it should contain 30% good protein that is recommended for night tilapia. Now, these are just experimental protocols. We went for this is the result you can see. I want to make sure that uh, when you, you, you fertilize weekly, you do weekly fertilization of the fertilizer, and then you feed it half the amount of feed which is required. We got more higher growth and more yield than if you feed it daily without fertilization. If you fertilize only, uh, most farmers complain about uh, about, about yeah, being the oil, but because my men, because they don't feed. So if you don't feed it, you can see the, the lady line at the bottom. You get the very, very low growth. This one, this is without feed, just fertilization. If you feed, you get higher growth. But if you add fertilizer, you get very higher growth. So we have now, we, 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 when we teach farmers, we say, you have to fertilize weekly. And normally the farmers, they, they just fertilize maybe, we carry out a, a survey and you find that most of them, they just fertilize once. They, are, they, are, they don't fertilize regularly. They can just fertilize one in one or two times in three months. But in this case, you have to fertilize regularly, and the recommended here is weekly fertilization. Yeah, these are the condition factor. The higher the value, the better the condition. The FCR, the lower the value, the better. That is, you use lower value, you get more weight gain. The sub, uh, the, I show here they survive. So in conclusion, what we have concluded, what we say, is that first the night lapia is better compared to other species that has been proved even in other countries so we also say the night lapia is better but we say in case you can't access the night lapia if we are, you can use the warm tilapia but as i said we, we, I, I, i'm not reporting here but we have that we show that the night lapia in the cold environment like you find it grows slowly so we do want maybe another study to find out which species can perform better in Fiji and in or something like that. But in the warm area, the night lapia, the performance is very high compared to other species. Then you have to catch all males. You catch all males. And I said you can produce all males either by sorting, by that is tedious. But you can do hybridization, or can do sexy reverse. So if you, yeah, if you, you can also, I didn't say this of, of using, using the African catfish. The catfish, you, normally what, you, what we did, for example, you, we stopped first the, the night lap here, and then after 45 days, we introduced the, the, the catfish. The duty of the catfish is to eat the newly hatched fry or finger. So you don't catch at the same time because if you catch at the same time, if they grow at the same length, the, the tilapia will be, the catfish will eat the, 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 the your stock, the tilapia stock. So you delay the stocking of your catfish uh, to make sure that the, the, the tilapia has grown to a site that cannot be eaten by the catfish. So you introduce. 
So if you produce those, those the catfish, also the, you increase the perform the growth of the tilapia because the, 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 if they produce the hatch eggs, they get the new fry. They are eaten by by the catfish. In that case, you provide space for the for the night the original stock of night tilapia. But it's better to the best one is to catch all males. How we produce the males, we say either by hormone treatment or by hybridization. So hybridization, we found that the hybrids are better than the sex reversed males, so you better catch hybrids. But the problem of hybrids, I say you have to maintain two species. For example, one tilapia and the dairy tilapia. In that case, you increase the cost of production. So the best way is to do sex reversal. You just treat the new hatched fry with the hormone, and then you change them to. If you use many hormone, you change them to males. And the hormone sex reverse tilapia, they grow faster than if you catch a mixed sex. For the reason I say. Yeah, in terms of diet, we say we have a diet. We diet that fifty per. You use source of protein is moringa and the sunflower seed cake, and you use 50% of which in the diet, and you get a higher growth, even better than using the, the, the soya bean. Still, you can use even 25 sunflower and 75 moringa. Still, you get good result. If you use sunflower only, you, you depress the growth. So don't use the sunflower as a source of protein. You can combine with the moringa. Uh, not reporting here, I said we tried the, uh, the Rukina. The Rukina was poorer than the Moringa. Yeah, so Moringa is a better plant protein source compared to sunflower. I said that. Uh, but for better result, you better mix with sunflower seed cake. They complement it to each other. And you get high yield. And then daily feeding at 5%, you get more more growth, high yield. But I said in terms of profit, our study shows that feeding 5% and you skip a day, you get more profit. But in terms of size of the fish, you better feed at 5%. And it's better you feed 5% and you skip a day than you feeding at 2.5% of God when you pay. Because that showed like that. And then the combination of weekly fertilization with feeding, but the feeding now you reduce to 2.5% of body weight. You get more yield and more profit. So we are advocating for the management that involves weekly fertilization plus feeding at half the amount that is required. In that case, the water quality parameter will remain normal, the growth will be higher than if you feed, you, uh, you feed alone or you fertilize alone. Yeah, the water quality, I, I didn't report here, but we were also monitoring the water, we were also monitoring the water quality in the ponds to see that the oxygen level are normal, the pH and the, the line. Yeah, lastly, Mr. Chairman, I would like to thank the, our sponsors. We were funded by Fish Innovation Lab, Former it was CRISP, collaborative research programs. I think we know here at so we have CRISP bean, but also we have apple fish. Yeah, so this funded us for almost 10 years uh, when we did a, a number of studies. So we uh, are thanking them very much. So thank you very much, Mr. Chair. It's really a practical way for me um, and uh, some very clear conclusions which those of you who want to engage in telepathy funding, I'm sure you won't find it difficult. Now the um, usual procedure is uh, for, for the audience to ask uh, maybe something like five questions 
address them to Professor Chinyamuga, and then he will answer those. And then if there are some follow-up questions, then you can raise up your hand. So I'm going to allow um, five people now. Professor Chinyamuga, you can sit down and, and uh, write down the questions. Um, and when five questions have been asked, I'll give the opportunity to answer them. And then if there are some follow-up questions, you also get an opportunity to do it. Now, before I give the uh, chance to the audience, I have my own, let me get the ball rolling by asking two questions. One is a, uh, I know Moringa only the kind of produces quite a lot of seed. A single tree could have uh, maybe something like five, six hundred pots. Um, and I was wondering whether the uh, seeds aren't, aren't more um, full of protein than the leaves. That's my first point. Uh, my first question. The second one, which has aroused interest in me, is the uh, hormonal reverse process. Um, I just want to tell you that about two years ago, that is 2017, we published, myself and colleagues at the Pestman Center, published a paper in pesticide uh, science, which is the effect of um, fertility control hormones on reproduction of one of the major protein species in Tanzania. And uh, we also presented those findings in uh, conferences in Germany, China, South Africa, and uh, in Britain. And it seems that it has aroused the interest of uh, many scientists to the extent that the uh, same experiments are now being conducted for native species in South Africa, Namibia, uh, Ethiopia, Indonesia, and uh, in Swaziland. People want to use um, monocontrol to control fertility in rodents. But I have also received quite a number of, of um, inquiries, particularly the uh, importance of um, and the danger of, uh, of uh, those ones um, affecting humans by uh, leaching in water or being taken up by crop plants. As people ask, people ask lots of questions about that. Now, uh, the synthetic hormones that we are using, two particular ones, a combination of them, are based on the chemistry of hormones which are being used by women. And women all over the world are using hormones. So um, the fear that these problems are creating in people is, of course, quite uh, understandable. But one thing is that it's not women who ask the questions. It's men. Women have been using this them for many years. They don't have any worries. Why are men asking about, about the use of hormones? So my point here is, are these hormones which reverse the sex of fish very specific to fish? Could they somehow find their way into humans? Or, uh, so I'm raising uh, Professor Chinyamuga. We have done our own studies and we passed the questions. Now, this is your study. I want to ask questions about it. Okay. So, any other further questions from the audience, please? Three questions. Yes. My name is Gilles. I'm only a private stakeholder. I would like to congratulate Dr. Uh, I mean, sorry, Professor Tanyamboga for the next presentation. I have two questions. The first question is in study three, we are talking about sex reversal. Uh, my question is I would like to know about these local farmers. We are using this sex reversal, but on this, uh, the set of hormone, not in hybridization, only in hormone. So I would like to know in local farmers, they will use these hormones. How how they they will be able to use these hormones in the in because you said you just use this hormone by feeding the fish in the food of the fish. So I would like to know is there any other way? To use this home instead of giving them through food. And the second question is about the moringa. Moringa uh, the, According to many studies, they show that plants they contain many fibers. So I'd like to know because this 
nice love there. It's difficult for them to digest the, I mean, due to high fiber content in these plants, the nice love here, the digestibility will be low. So I would like to know in your studies, did you use any method or anything to improve this in the high protein, and if you use maybe fermentation or what kind of fermentation or what kind of that thing you use to get my question. Thank you. Thank you. For me, I would like to know. You say that you are using catfish to control the the population of the trapea. I'm wondering if you can end up getting more catfish compared to trapea. I don't know how do you control that one. <laughs> I have a few questions. One, um, if we go for uh, fish uh, culture, aquaculture, at the moment we don't have much rains. How are we assuring farmers that they can have enough water throughout the year, especially when we are expanding aquaculture kind of an industry? The second comment is uh, on one of the experimental setting where you talked about uh, three groups, all men mixed culture and the female catfish. Uh, I don't see uh, the effect of catfish to other uh, 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 groups. I, 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 I believe uh, the presence of catfish, much as they are not eating the fingerlings, they, uh, they can still have an effect to the performance of other uh, fish. But in your study, you did not uh, discriminate that factor. So I need to know whether putting uh, male animals, adult male animals, and uh, uh, catfish, would there be any effect on growth performance? Uh, the other comment is uh, uh, when you do males hybridization and when you do males by hormones, you gave us good data that on one category performance in terms of growth is higher, but on the other side, the uh, survival rate is higher, but in a different way. How did you discriminate the effect of genetic kind of uh, uh, makeup because of hybridization and the effect of that hormone, particularly the two. Um, the other uh, question was on feeding. You say you can give five or 2.5, skip a day or continue. And then you came, say, in Njombe you still have a problem because of the weather. I believe uh, you probably approached it wrong by saying Animals or fish need so and so meal, say 5% of the total body weight. You did not consider weather. Uh, because in cold weather, animals eat more than in warm weather. I believe if you do the same experiment under different weather conditions, you may come up with different results. And that could help you answer the problem as to how you can approach in Jombe area and other cold weather so to say, areas. Then uh, lastly, on fertilization. We know there are effects as far as you fertilize water. Um, uh, animals that live in water can have diseases because of uh, interfering with the water quality. Much as you defend the water quality in terms of oxygen and other requirements to the fish, I believe uh, disease-causing organisms can grow in a fertilized kind of uh, water, and they can cause disease. And uh, as you answer that one, help me too to understand, because I know catfish can harbor parasites. And these parasites have been shown histopathologically to have no effect to the catfish. But the same parasites can affect Nile, Nile perch or whatever. Uh, now, in the absence of, uh, of catfish, these fish can have parasites and their growth can go down. In the presence of catfish, the worms may not be there. That's why I'm asking, uh, if you put catfish, did you see the growth performance of Nile fish? Or whatever Nile, what, this fish. Um, what tilapia, sorry, sorry, the tilapia. 
I'm not a, an agriculturalist, aqu but uh, you understand what I'm saying. My key problem is uh, animals and the fish, especially catfish, have evolved a way of overcoming diseases as far as parasites are concerned. Uh, I will be happy to see an experimental setting, including male and catfish, as far as their growth performance is concerned. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. I have a very simple question. My question is that I would like to know, is there any difference in test between the uh, reversed tilapia, sex reversed tilapia, and the hybridized tilapia? This is one. The second question is I've been hearing about some people talking about organic cultured fish. I'd like to know, is it possible? And if it is possible, how do you do it? Thank you. Thank you. I have a minor question, uh, which is tallies with the title. We have these words, improved food security and poverty reduction. So I had a question that, uh, you talked about controlling the population. Is the reproduction rate being problematic at any scale of production in such a way we need to have a control? Given that if at all we aim at uh, improving food security and poverty reduction, so probably we need high production. Why should we be worried about population control? Probably we need to either think about those people who will be practicing uh, this uh, kind of uh, business. That's my question. Thank you. Mine is not a question. It's just I want to clear my understanding. And first of all, allow me to start by uh, commending or congratulating Professor Shinyambuga for this uh, good presentation on fish. But secondly, being a forester, and you are talking about fish, I think I want to make sure that I go there, I go out, I understand what we have concluded. Sex reversal. I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying to think about, for example, you have fish in the pond, and you are using hormone to control the reverse, or to reverse the sex. Are you catching one fish or another? Or are you just putting the hormone in the pond so that each fish can continue at its own place? Suppose I'm right in the second question. Then if I'm right in the second argument here, then my question is, uh, don't you think it's dangerous if you, tend your, you, you change your, the, the fish in the pond to be made? <laughs> you see? To me, I think you will be now decreasing the yield, no reproduction, if my second argument is correct. I, it's just a simple question, I want to clear my understanding. <laughs> the second one, I wanted to, I, I think uh, one of my colleagues there have preempted me, yeah, I, 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 but I will still ask this question. You said one problem of, of Nile tilapia is the overproduction. Me as a forester, I think this is, is not a problem. Because I'm thinking that if, you, if these are overproducing, overproducing, the issue here is to increase the space. So that you have more fish and you, you know, you said you have a problem with the, with the protein and everything. This is a protein and these are overproducing. Don't you think if you increase the space, then you have solved the problem? I just I'm, I'm thinking in a layman point of view. Thank you very much. Yeah, but, uh, but, uh, what do we do? In a point, you rare those which are already sex reversed. So it means you produce the sex reverse in the hatchery. In the hatchery. Yeah, in the hatchery, where I said, immediately after hatching, when they start feeding, they feed a feed containing the, the empty home. So they have empty or we want to make them males. So and, uh, in that case, you, you, uh, reverse is done in a hatchery. Now you, you grow in a pond or in a, in a, in a, in a tank. We, we were discouraging that, 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 that practice of uh, 
keeping fish or rearing fish over it. The farmer should get from a reliable hatchery that produces all males. Not, not, no, this is not, it should not be encouraged to be done at farm level. Is that a hatchery or a research institution where, where it can be done properly? Yeah, and also the, the hormone you can you can mix it with the easier is to mix it with feed, but also you can because the fish live in water, you can put it in, in water still it again. But also, this is done only for the first month, it's not it's not continuously. So you do only for first, for example, we did it for 28 days. Yeah, you do for the first month of life, that is enough. And the amount you use is very, very minute. I said 60 milligrams per kilogram of feed. Yeah, it's very, very minute. And if you feed only for one month, after six months, they really in the body of the fish, there will be very significant amount. And then, yeah, we didn't, yeah, we didn't do digestibility, but then we didn't have, we didn't have facility for doing digestibility for fish, but you, our partner did the disability in the US and they did it for Moringa and, the, and the Rukina. And we did, how we prepared the Moringa, I didn't explain very well. We harvest the, the leaves and then we dry them under the shade to constant weight under the shade and then we soak in water to remove the anti-nutritional factors for, we soak, we soak for 20, four hours, and then we dry, after soaking, and then we, 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 we crush into powder form and mix with the other feed ingredients. That's, that's what we did. And then Professor Marwa, yeah, I see the issue of control of population. What I said, the cut fee, depending on their interest, I said, I say, we did a survey, we found that what is popular is, is not cut fish, is now is tilapia. People go to the restaurant, they don't ask for catfish, they ask for tilapia. So it means you have to produce tilapia. So how, but the problem I said, if you catch a male and a female in the same pond, they will reproduce. So when you come to harvest, the size of the fish will be small. So how do we make the size big? One method is to use catfish. The catfish they will eat the newly hatched uh, fry or fingering. So they again they control the population of of tilapia. In addition, you have a second crop of the of the catfish, of course. Yeah. So the catfish is, is just used to control the population of the tilapia. So that tilapia, the original stock of tilapia, grow faster, so that you can get high yield of tilapia. Uh, Professor Marago, yeah, we are promoting fish, <laughs> there is issue of climate change, I know. But what we are doing because of, as I, as I showed, the production from the natural water bodies is declining. And the people need fish, and, and I said, as income increases, people will go for animal protein. So that you have to increase production. So for fish, the most important is water. Before you start farming, of course, you must have a reliable source of water. But for water, you can use underground water. You can do rain harvesting. Yes, it's a technique for, for this water collection. But to make sure that you have a reliable source of water, that is very important. And another point I have to add here is uh, BBC don't. If you use tap water, this is chlorinated water, the fish will die. So what we do, you have to keep them on the open, open maybe for, we found that for two days is enough, the chlorine will be over, you can use them for, for fish rearing. But use, don't use them straight away from the pond. But fortunately ours, our sources, I think they are not treat, they are not chlorinated, chlorinated, they don't have chlorine in our, what we use at Magadu, from sewer source, that water is fresh and uh, we just use it with without a problem. But don't use the municipal water. If you are using that one, please keep it in the open space for some time, they said two days, and then you can use it. 
Yeah, so the issue of water, you, 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 there are many sources. You can use spring or natural rain harvest, but make sure that you have enough source of water. Yeah, and then in Malango, effect of catfish on the other fish. Yeah, I think I said they just eat the, the other, they, they eat the, 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 the small fish in the pond so that the trachea can grow faster. We didn't look at the issue of diseases. Disease becomes important in agriculture when you do under intensive farming. Intensive, when I say intensive, the good quality feed, use uh, stock in dense, for example, use two to three, that is a, a low step. But if you go to five, then you, you can get those problems. So we didn't, uh, uh, we didn't uh, assess the issue of, 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 of disease, but yes, fish get diseases. But under this same intensive system, the problem is, is very low. And then, yeah, the, the hormone, I don't think we have the issue of genetic makeup and the hormone. Can you? You said maybe hybridization, the hormone tree. Yeah, we have two trees. We said the best thing way to produce males. One, we say, is hormonal reversal. Treating the fry, you know, the fry was there. Many hormone investment. Or you have two species, you mate them. When they become men, the night rapier is XY. The other one is ZW, so if you remember your genetics. So if you cross the two, if you if you have Y something, once it has Y, it becomes a, a male. Yes. And once it, uh, uh, the female, the other one, in order to be a male, you must have Z, Z. Yeah. Or WZ. So, because they have different, the chromosome, uh, the sex chromosome. In the other one is WZ, in the other one is XY. So, the genetic makeup, this fish which is sex reversed, the genetic makeup doesn't change. If it's XY, it remains X. Why we say it's sex reversed? This fish, for example, is XX. In that case, it's supposed to be a female. But if you add the hormone, it will have uh, the traits or the phenotype of the male. But genetically, it is X, X, but it can't express the female phenotype. It will express the male phenotype because of the hormone. I said it depends which hormone is in higher concentration. Yeah, so genet genetic makeup will remain either X, X, that is a female. But phenotypically, Outward, it will be a, and it will function as a male. It will produce as a, a male. Yeah, I don't know if I have answered that one. Yeah, uh, feeding. Yeah, you said the fertilization. Yeah, can encourage the growth of other, of other parasites. But we, why well, is that saying? I guess we didn't encounter, encounter any problem. Is fertilization. And also, we said there is, the you used to recommend it, you don't, if you over fertilize, you produce, you produce, you produce the water. If you produce the water, then you get some problem. Also, if you overfeed, you, you remember fish that live in water, you're providing the feed in your water. So the excess feed, you can also pollute the, the water. So that's why we say, when we, we, we our address show that if you use half the amount of feed required and uh, Fertilize, you get good result. Yeah, the catfish can have a parasite that can affect the tilapia. Yeah, we, we did assess that one. Whether, but we did experience problem in the tilapia, uh, and so that we need we did uh, maybe that could be a further study to see whether, in terms of parasite and uh, parasite, whether the diseases, the parasite for catfish can affect the. the the uh, night lap here. Ooh, yeah. And then uh, Professor Chimbi Msora. In test, oh, I mean, unfortunately, we didn't do, we did, uh, I did a report here, we did a, uh, uh, how do they call it for doing in the science? Uh, organoleptic, but we didn't use, we used, we compared the tilapia, the, the speech, the other speech. Yeah, and we found the tilapia. Is better, but we didn't. We we don't know whether you can change the test. Maybe that could be another 
we can do it because it's very easy. If you have the, you, 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 we have, but we didn't assess that one to know whether the test changes after reversing the sex. I think you, you are, Professor, you asked ask me like that. Yeah, sorry, we didn't, we didn't do the, the, the organoleptic test. We did only for the trachea speech from Black Victoria, from Wang and from Ruvuma. Yeah, organic uh, agriculture, uh, yeah, it's possible, you can, you can do, you can do, but, but the growth rate will be, will be slow. Uh, that's why people have come to this practice of weekly fertilization. I reported using the organic fertilizer, but I also even use organic fertilizer, like chicken manure or keto manure and so forth. You, you can do, but you get the yield will be lower, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, there are people who demand that food should be produced without use of any chemical, any fertilizer, any pesticide, any... Uh, but uh, it depends on the condition. For example, those people in Europe, they have plenty, they can afford those ones. But we need food, so it means we have to use whatever is possible. Yeah, there is this... Yeah, you asked me to... Con uh, let me get it properly. You said the high population is better. That's what you are, I think. Yeah, what we are saying the purpose is here to produce nine tilapia. Yes. That is a market value. So if you catch a male and a female, I said you get small, the fish will be smaller at, the, at the harvest. And if you continue catching for two to three years, I said there will be in breeding, so at the end you will have very, very small fish. So if you want to produce tilapia of larger size, we recommend to catch all males. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and then, yeah, I think the, the question of the DBC answered it. Yes, yeah, so. Okay, let me invite some uh, more questions to them. Um, I mean, one, two, three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, let's be the five. Let's be the five. Let's say that you conducted this study since 2009. So, I'd like to know. Uh, the rate of diffusion and adoption by farmers, because I'm sure you did it for the sake of farmers, for the benefit of farmers. So I want to know whether, uh, how the, the innovation was diffused and adopted by farmers. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for a very nice presentation. Um, as a food scientist, I was very much interested in the study regarding the uh, moringa with the seed cake. So, um, uh, sunflower seed cake. My concern is on the safety. The sunflower can easily be affected with the aflatoxins. So, I was wondering about the quality of the seeds that have been used. Did you consider maybe to check, or is this something that you should consider in the future? because aflatoxin is a very hot topic at the moment. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor Chinyambuga, for a very nice presentation. And when I read the topic, it's very exciting. I see uh, uh, various concepts like sustainability, there's food security, and poverty reduction. By the way, is it, co is it correct if I say Nile tilapia farming, because here I see the concept of catch. What about if I say farming? Am I correct? Uh, another question is that uh, I have the impression that the concept of sustainability uh, needed further exploration, as, as uh, Professor Malago hinted. If you are talking about sustainability of this farming, you cannot uh, skip this issue of water availability. So I think there is a need to explore the concept of sustainability. And to me, it's like there have been uh, much emphasis on production side. Even the concept of uh, food security, uh, poverty reduction, I would expect 
maybe uh, when you responded about the um, organic or non-organic, said in in developing country, we worry about the production, but the concept of food security is about the safety of consumers. So if we don't care about the chemicals that are put in the production system, we are affecting the same food security you're talking about. Uh, about the poverty reduction, so I would expect maybe finding indicating to what extent this uh, farming has reduced poverty. So it is a nice topic, but I think there's a room for further exploration on this other concept food security and poverty, and even the sustainability concept. Thank you. Thank you both for your nice presentation. Uh, mine is just a, a small question. I just want to get your views on um, where do you see aquaculture in the next 10, 20 years? Thank you very much, uh, Professor Chinyamboga, for your informative presentation. Uh, my question is about uh, a reduction of cost. As you recommend Moringa to be supplemented in a way to reduce the cost. But uh, did you consider the cost of environmental degradation? Because if you recommend this, I'm worried if farmers can harvest more Moringa and cause environmental degradation, which is a sink for carbon. But in addition to that, you recommend also 5%, feeding 5% and skip one day, which is equally the same as someone is feeding 2.5% and not skipping a day. Did you consider the welfare of fish by skipping a day? Thank you. Uh, so, 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 thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, the issue of aflatoxin, uh, uh, I think the, the main issue is to get the supply from a reliable source and also you can check for this aflatoxin. We, we did ass assess the extent of this problem in, the, for example, in sunflower seed cake in, uh, in the market. Yeah, then that can be can be a further study. Uh, I wish Dr. Professor Pekara was here. He did also he did on it something on fish heads, maybe he, maybe he has studied this, but we didn't do that one. Uh, Dr. Babiri, uh, yeah, we say fish farming is okay, but we say fish culture is okay. Uh, the issue of sustainable we have to make this farming sustainable. That's why we are proposing this protocols like use cheap feed of, of, but of good quality, but then you avoid the inbreeding by, by, by catching all males or something like that. Yeah, we, we didn't assess the impact. We, we looked on one study, we did one study, we did, we did also the social. I didn't report here, the, I, 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 I reported only the biological one. We have two types of, we have experiment and we have investigation. Investigation when you do the social. For example, we looked at the impact of fish on nutrition under five, those of stunting and the wasting, something like that. But we didn't find anything between the household that has fish pond and those which don't have. We didn't find any significant difference. But simply because these people can buy from the, the neighbor or from the market. Yeah. So, but, but we found in terms of income, it was relatively higher for the household with, with fish pond. But so we, we, have, we have also the social, the social, we have like the gender, the value chain, and the nutrition, the, the impact. We did those ones, but I didn't report them here because I just reported the biological one. So we, our hope is that if you increase fish production, you can solve the problem, you can decrease my nutrition. Or if you increase the income, you can reduce the poverty. But as I said, we need to do a long, a long time study to assess the impact of, on poverty. Maybe that, as you said, that could be a further investigation. And uh, Dr. Msari, nowadays there is a very high interest in aquaculture, especially around the rest of the world. more people have gone into aquaculture. What we found, most people are just going into aquaculture without having the relevant knowledge. 
Some people do just if you have money, you can just put a bond in there. <laughs> We, uh, but uh, then I found, we, we, for example, we did a survey, we found that there was one person, I think around the Salaam, Bagamoyo, up to Mkulanga, Bagamoyo Kibaha, and uh, what he was telling them, he, 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 he like, went into a contract with him, he, 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 he constructed a pond, the actual concrete tank, so he was propagating for concrete tank, so people were investing a lot with concrete tanks, and then he would send you the finger, and then the feet, and then tell you that in six months you take half a kilo of tilapia. But that message wasn't correct. What we found is the tanks were leaking and something like that. But so what we say is very important to look for relevant information. We called a, we organized a meeting here, but people from the restaurant, so we have Suwa here, you can come to Suwa. Or you have a Begani there in Bagamoy, you can just make, go there and they get the advice. Yeah. So there is an interest in agriculture, as I said, because of the decline of production from the, the lakes. And you see now the ministry is very tough on the regulations. Yeah, so it means you have to go. And if you do agriculture also, you have to be registered by the fisheries officer so that when you sell your fish, it should be known because it, there may be below the site that is commended. But now we say if you're not. Because they cannot differentiate that it's coming from agriculture or from the lake. So you have to be known so that when you sell, you don't have a problem. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, the issue of Moringa, Dr. Selema, we encourage, because you can plant your own Moringa. We, we, we don't encourage to go to the wild to, to collect Moringa. So you, I think Moringa can be easily established. So we encourage the farmers to establish Moringa. Uh, yeah, uh, and also the issue of environmental degradation. I think if we have a farmer can plant moringa, uh, then we, I think the issue of environmental degradation will not be there. And uh, the welfare of the fish. We said that there is no. What we, what we said because we fish live in water. So by feeding every day, sometimes you can pollute the water. So then you can stress the fish. But sometimes you can give that child, if it does feed for one day, I said for the tilapia, they eat also microalgae in the pond. Those, those green water, they contain microscopic plants that will be eaten by the fish. So to make the stomach empty, and then they can feed you on the next day, instead of continually feeding. There was the issue of weather. Someone talked, I don't remember, of weather. Yeah, normally, Trapia, the temperature recommended is, you have to read them from 25 to 30. So below 20, the, the feeding becomes, they can't, yeah, they feed, but at the lower, reduce the level. Even when you are, for example, when you are cutting fish, it is, it is advised to feed, for example, around 10 when there is sunlight, and they don't feed at late in the evening. Uh, it's because they depend on the oxygen in the water. That oxygen is produced by the, the plants in the water, those green sheets. So uh, at night, we know that uh, there is no photosynthesis at night. In that case, the oxygen level goes down. So, and if you feed, the, the uneaten feed is, you know, it's, it has to be decomposed. Decomposition will use the oxygen, in that case, you can cause a problem. So, in, in, I don't know, in cold environment, the reason was that they, they were at below 20, the feeding intake, the feeding intake becomes very, very, or they are not active. And it, it is not recommended to feed the fish when there is cloud, for example. There must be sunlight, the fish are active. Uh, I'm not sure whether, I think I, I, if I were exhausted, it's not the equation. Yeah, thank you very much. And I think we have all, almost exhausted the time of the for um, asking questions and you get answers from the presentation. Okay. So at this point, last stage then, there's something to come out for concerning um, uh, questions which are asked by audience. And I thought um, the answers are satisfactory.
But I'm such a member is a member of the Canadian Square Investors, so we can put any police which was by the uh, public and all sides. Most of the best So thank you, Professor Nebuka. Now, according to uh, our schedule, I would like to, um, to invite um, Professor Paul Akisa. Hi, Paul. Paul Akisa is a school, he's a classmate. Oh, so he's a classmate of the children that is giving a lot of things. Oh, and uh, just to um, mention this, which uh, Professor Professor Kilagani mentioned, uh, Professor Gokis happens to be the PhD supervisor, Professor Chibiro. Okay. Uh, Mr. DBC, Professor Peter Gila, Chairman Professor Rhodes Makondi, my classmate, and the distinguished uh, Professor Chenbuga. Ladies and gentlemen, I think before I give the vote of thanks, uh, let me ask that everybody we give a big clap to Professor Chenbuga. Thank you very much. Very few words, very few words. What I learned from your lecture today, Professor, is that uh, I didn't know before today that fish is a huge resource that can be used to fight hunger, malnutrition, and food insecurity. I love fish. And believe me, I'm going to love it more after today. But also something else that I learned from your lecture is that uh, fish is a potential industrial investment, especially for countries like Tanzania, which now we are going more and more industrial. So you jumped into the right area at the right time. But the third thing that I learned from your lecture is that uh, proportion contribution of aquaculture to income of smallholder farmers is approximately 20%, which is a huge contribution. And indeed, if uh, politically this can be supported, indeed uh, we can fight poverty in our country. Now, you talked about Nile tilapia being the second most farmed fish. And Tanzania has all these waters Coincidentally, the River Nile flows from one of our big waters, Lake Victoria, so Tanzania stands to benefit a lot. So young people should take up from, from here, I think. Uh, Professor Nyambuge, without wasting too much time, uh, he summarized these six topmost studies uh, hinging around aquaculture, and we enjoyed listen, listening to that. I'm not going to repeat that because we heard you very loudly and it was all very clear. And, but in a nutshell, this is what I want to talk about Professor Nambuga uh, today. Ladies and gentlemen, what we have heard today is the best of Professor Chenambuga. When we say the best, you know, when we talk about artists, artists produce albums. And then when they become very popular at their peaks, they produce an album which is the best of. You understand? So today we had the best of Professor Chenambuga, a club for him. <laughs> Up and above uh, the research that you presented, Professor, I personally know that uh, you have done much, much more than what you presented. Indeed, within one hour, you can't present everything. I got to know Professor Sebastian Chenyambuga for the first time in 1997 when he walked into my office. He introduced himself very humbly and this is what he said to me that uh, Professor I want you to be my PhD supervisor. I said in what area? He said, I want to do some DNA work 
to understand differences between God's strengths. I don't want to go more into that, but in the next three years, I really, really enjoyed working with him. I enjoyed seeing his intelligence. I enjoyed seeing him as an explorer, as a discoverer, touring the biggest labs in the world and publishing in high reputable journals. And so out of all that, and then hard work in the next 15 or so years, today Sue is celebrating you as one of its latest mature professors. Congratulations. In his own concluding remarks, Professor Sanyambuga said, I quote him, he didn't want to go on working on just genetics because he knew that that ends more theoretical. So he jumped into an area where he knew he could make the bigger impact. And this is what I learned from your lecture then, today, that research is of no use if it ends up to be admired by other researchers only. And I will repeat that, that research is of no use if it ends up to be admired by other researchers only. So you made a paradigm shift. You made a radical shift as you jumped from agriculture to animal genetics, to molecular genetics, and to aquaculture. So you are a discoverer, you are an explorer. So rightly, aquaculture, as you said it, and we learned very well from you, is one research area where inputs are as quick, no outputs rather, when impacts are as quick as low hanging fruits. Especially in our modern day Tanzania, as we aim to transform to a middle income. Thank you very much, Professor Sebastian Wilson Chenyambuga. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. DBC. Thank you very much, professors, chairman, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you, um, so, Wakista, for some very good remarks regarding our presenter today. Um, before I uh, give my closing remarks, I recognize the presence of two uh, distinguished officers of the University, Professor Chibunda, the Vice Chancellor, and Professor Kahima, the Deputy Vice Chancellor, Admin and Finance. Welcome. Uh, we have been informed of your other tasks, which made you unable to be with us in the in the future. Um, and so uh, we are very happy that, uh, even though you are very tired from that uh, meeting that you had, you found some few minutes to join us towards the end of the of the, of the um, professorial you know, lecture. Um, maybe the, uh, Professor Bakisa mentioned some, gave some remarks about the lecture. We are, all quite excited that uh, uh, Professor Chinyamoga had been able to look back through the years he has been working on different um, kind of research screened and compiled um, a very interesting uh, you know, lecture. Let me say that um, we are coming to the end of a very interesting um, Professor Chinyamoga lecture. Uh, there are some few um, comments which I wanted to make. Maybe I've been presented by the Chancellor Academic was when he introduced Professor Chinyamoga. But nevertheless, I think the important information. One is that um, it's a new thing for the professors, particularly when we uh, get promoted to be professors, we shouldn't be waiting for 10, 15 years before we give our noble lectures. And therefore, it's a new thing to the university, it's a new thing to the same country we live, it's a new thing to the community in that we produce our results, make them available, and show how we can help to transform society. Um, if we can have at least two, um, two 
in local regions per year. That means in the number of, um, of um, professors which Professor Gillow has in his books, it may take us about 25 years before we go around the professors. So we should, we should actually strive to give more per year. My calculation is that if we have got five of several lectures per year, then it's going to take us 10 years before we go around the number of professors that we have today. And uh, that will be very encouraging. We have been told by Professor Gila that there are three uh, volunteers at the moment who will be providing giving their own lectures um, in the uh, very near future. So we would like others to, I don't think uh, Professor Gila would be very happy to have three um, professors giving lectures and then from there he doesn't have any anymore. Probably it will take another 10 years. So meanwhile, while he's preparing so three, it's good for those who are, who are thinking of which to, uh, to go to him, register themselves so that can even, they can even get some encouragement to do it. And by doing that, we shall be doing some service to the university. I think it's, it's, it's a pity if somebody is going to, to, our, to our library and asks the librarian for uh, copies of prof professorial and open lecture books and gets only one or two. And at least, may I just mention that uh, in the uh, Suami today, I would say, someone asking whether we produce these books. I can assure the individual that they are being produced. And uh, maybe the SD department could pick at least about two or three copies to put in their own departmental library for everybody to see and everybody to read. So, with these few remarks, I thank all of you for coming and for participating actively. And our deep gratitude goes to Professor Chen Muga, who was our inaugural lecturer in this afternoon. So, thank you all for coming, and I hope the next one. Have to be more people in China. Thank you. Nashukuru sana, nashukuru sana mtangazaji e, Kwa kweli kama olivo ona, leo tulikuwa na tukio Amolo ni, tuki, ni tukio la kawaida sana kwenye e, community ya, 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 ya wanataaluma na watafiti Kwamba hawa watafiti wanapokuwa mefikia ngazi ya, ma, ya uprofesa ya Wanapata fusa ya kujitokeza kutoa hii tunaita professorial inaugural lecture Na huu ni muhadhara ambao Profesa na utoa, mara tu pale anapo kuwa amepanda ngazi na kufikia ngazi ya profesa. Na kinachofanyika pale ni kwamba, anapata fusa ya kuweza kuieleza eh, community na mzunguka, pengine hata taifa zima, kwamba yeye kwa muda umrefu amekuwa anafanya utafiti katika maeneo gani. Eh, na amefanya utafiti gani, umekuwa na impact gani, na umeleta matokeo gani katika eneo hilo alilo kwa mebobea yeye. Na inakuwa ni vizuri sana ana, 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 kutuwa kwa kwa muhadhara kunaendana na kile kipindi cha yeye anapokuwa amepanda ame ngazi na kufikia ngazi ya uprofesa. Kasa leo tulikuwa tuna profesa moja, profesa Chinyambuga, ambaye alikuwa nafanya yeye e, utafiti kwenye mambo ya samaki, ambaye kama ulivo msikia, ameweza kueleza kwa kirefu sana. Utafiti ambao umefanya kwa muda mrefu sana, toka mwaka F1, mea tisa, tisina, saba, amekuwa nafanya utafiti, na leo ameweza kutoa matokeo mazuri sana kwa jinsi ambavo e, wote tumesikiliza. Lakini, wito wangu, wito wangu, wito wangu kwa maprofesa walio baki hapa chuoni. Kwa kweli tuitumie fursa hii nzuri sana. Hii ni fursa ambayo mtu anaipata mara moja katika maisha yako ya, ya taaluma. Kwa ni kitu kizuri na tumefurahi sana tunampongeza sana mwezetu Chinyambuga ambaye leo naye ameonyesha kwamba amekomaa kama kama profesa hapa chuo.
Professor Kwanza Ongera sana kwa kutoa professor in agro lecture ya utafiti wako Ongera sana. Asante. Unajisikiaje baada ya kutuambia utafiti wako na usuni na ulikuwa na usuni kwa kifupi? Ah uh, utafiti wazo kubwa la utafiti ni kuongeza au kuboresha uzalishaji wa samaki aina ya ya sato au peleke kwenye ma, kwenye mabwawa au kwenye matangi kwamba kadri siku zinavyoendelea samaki kutoka kwenye vyanzo vya asili kama maziwa na mito una wanapungua na kwa hiyo samaki inabidi wazalishwe kutoka kwenye kwa watu wafuge samaki ili kuzalisha samaki badala ya kutegemea kwenye vyanzo vya asili ambavyo kule wanapungua kwamba tumekuja na njia ambazo kwamba mtu akizitumia anaweza akaboresha yani akazalisha samaki kwa akapata ma, 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 mavuno makubwa na mapato makubwa kwa mfano mmoja wapo ambao tunapendekeza tuna kwamba mtu asifuge yani au, au samaki ma, majike na madume pamoja kwenye bwawa kwa kwamba ni vizuri akafuga madume peke yake ili aweze kupata samaki wakubwa na akifuata wakubwa maana yake bei itakuwa kubwa na atapata pato kubwa kwa wingi zaidi na kwamba mtu asikae na samaki hao kwa muda mrefu sana kwa maana kwamba ukifuga madike na madume maana yake watazaliana kuna ile kuzaliana kiukoo si kuzaliana kiukoo kunaweza ukaleta matatizo ya kuduma kwa hiyo samaki wana, wana duma. na lingine lilikuwa ni upande wa kwa mfano lishe kwamba mtu uh, mara nyingi wakulima wanafuga tu wengine halishi au analisha eh, pumba kwa hiyo tunajosema kwamba ukifuga tu bila kulisha samaki ukwaji wao utakuwa ni wa pole pole sana kwa hiyo unaweza chakula cha ziada na tunasema kwamba chakula cha ziada ulazimu kumjia uwe na hivyo vinilishe kwa mfano kwa hasa hasa protein hasa protein chanzo cha protein kwenye vyakula vya samaki kwa mfano kama dagaa labda ni bei kubwa hata kama ni soya ni, ni bei kubwa lakini tumesema unaweza kutumia njia rahisi tu kwa mfano tumesema majani ya, ya mlonge au moringa unaweza ukayatengeneza uka, uka, uka ikawa chakula ukachanganya na pumba ba. yani mtu asilishe pumba peke yake sababu so, pumba peke yake inatoa tu E, kama ni wanga kwa hiyo lazima atakuwa na chanzo cha cha protini kwa hiyo unaweza kutumia majani ya ya mlonge ukichanganya na mashudu ya alizeti mashudu ya alizeti yanapatikana unaweza kusema ya kuwa vizuri ya na, na nyingine kwamba nasema lazima urutubishe bwawa katika kurutubisha bwawa usiweke tu mara moja kwamba lazima unaweza kurutubisha kila wiki unaweka mbolea kiasi fulani kuna ni vizuri kufuata viwango ambavyo vimependekezwa kuna viwango ambavyo vimependekezwa kwamba kwa labda kwa mita square moja weke kiasi gani unaweza kutumia mbolea hizi za viwandani au mbolea za asili bado samaki uta, kwa hiyo ni vizuri ukarutubisha lakini vile vile ukirutubisha tumesema kwamba punguza kile kiasi cha chakula ukiendelea kama chakula kikiwa kingi kinaweza kingine kisiliwa na kisipoliwa kinachafua maji kichafua maji kwa hiyo unasababisha matatizo kwenye samaki Eh, kwa hiyo tume, tume na inapendezwa kwamba unapolisha samaki ulishe kwa wale wadogo ya ndani ya mwezi mmoja unaweza kulisha asilimia kumi ya uzito wa ule samaki lakini baada ya pale unaweza kulisha asilimia tano eh, labda kwa wakulima ambao wanakutazama saizi na wangependa zaidi kujifunza kuhusu samaki wengewezaji kupata huu elimu ambayo itaweza kuwasaidia kuongeza kipato chao na vile vile kuongeza afya yao ya yeah, up hapa nani sua wakati tunatoa mafunzo ya ufugaji samaki bora kwa hiyo kwa vikundi mbalimbali mbali. tunaweza kutangaza kufanyia hapa sua kama wako mbali vile vile wakati tunawafanya tunawafuata kule kule tunawafundisha tumeshafanya kwa mfano Mbeya Mwanza kama huko Mafinga kwa hiyo ni vizuri kwamba tuseme kwamba mtu toa asifuge kwa mradi anafuga ni vizuri akafuata utaalamu inavyopendekezwa kwa hiyo kuna mafunzo ambayo atamuonyesha mtu kwamba kwa mfano bwawa liwe namna gani sehemu gani uchimbe bwawa e, chakula gani ulishe e, vitu vyote hivyo vina vinafundishwa kama ni kurutubisha mbolea gani utu, utumie na kiwango gani uweke kwa hiyo ni vizuri mkulima akapata mafunzo kabla ya kuanza ule ufugaji na kwamba anaweza akaja hapa sua kama wako mbali kwa sababu wanaweza kaandika kwa mkuu wa chuo kama wanaomba kupatiwa mafunzo ya ya ufugaji samaki bora na mkuu wa chuo atatuambia sisi idara yetu ambayo inahusika na huo ufugaji wa samaki tuko tayari kutoa mafunzo tunashukuru sana